is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We got a Night Lords video for you today. So we ran them in an RTT recently. It is one of my favorite factions to play for Chaos Space Marines. They're not the best, most competitive uh, army out there, but they're super fun. Uh, and when you tech them like the way I tech them, uh, you kind of make people pissed <laughs> that they have to run and flee their entire units which is pretty funny but uh it's a super fun list uh hopefully you guys can you know learn from it test it out before 10th edition because it is all going away so i wanted to get this to you as soon as possible so hopefully you can kind of run it with the with the models that you actually have and kind of maybe test it out in rtt because i didn't win i did lose i should have won the first game which is against the guy who actually won the tournament but we'll go over that in the video so thanks for clicking on the video yo first off if you guys are new to the channel definitely go check out some other videos uh because we do a lot of battle reports we do a lot of tactic videos and kind of how-to videos and there's a lot more coming up we're kind of in limbo right now with 10th edition coming out so by the time you click on this video whether it be 10th edition already came out or it's coming out there's about two months left of 9th edition which we have aco coming up atlantic city open open so if you guys are going to that definitely come up and say hi to me i always love seeing uh, my fellow dirtbags on uh, in live <laughs> in the world uh but i do appreciate my patrons if you guys are uh interested in the supporting the channel uh we did reach our goal of getting 250 dollars a month starting off with patreons we are still in the red because we're doing a lot of investments on the channel we got stickers 3d6 wargaming more characters that we just made uh, over on 3d6 wargaming we got lionel johnson uh the demon uh big guy we have the Drakari dude uh we got gilliman and we just did Yorick. I know a lot of people were asking for Yorick. So we got Yorick uh, up and running. And was there one more? I know we did six, but go check those out. They're pretty cool. We got also the Dirtbag Dice uh, up for sale on Discord. They're a dollar each if you guys are interested. And the stickers are $3.99 each. Uh, so if you guys are interested, go check out Discord. It's fucking awesome. So let's get into Night Lords. Uh, like I said, the list was super fun. It's a little bit different than what you've seen before. It is not full Night Lords, but it is a competitive Night Lords list. Uh, so let me pull this up for you guys and we'll go through it. First off, uh, I just have to say, I didn't get all of these ideas off myself. A lot of collaboration had to do with Discord and the guys on Discord and also the Chaos Discord. Uh, they've been running this for a while now and I just kind of pulled one of my favorite characters I've played probably in a long time, which is the Master of Executions and I cannot wait to go over him in this list. So first off, we'll start off right at the top. Now, Dean Prince with Wings, this is kind of something you can twist change around i might go with nurgle next time i run him but i still love the um lord of terror now when i found out the lord of terror was a thing i was like this has to be in a night lord's uh list and the lord of terror makes you within six inches of the demon prince which is already minus one to, uh leadership you have to roll two dice for morale tests and take the lowest or take the highest uh so almost always they're going to be failing morale uh on the opponent and then i have him taking the diabolical strength just for uh, a power but he's also taking intoxicating elixir so that is the slanesh one he is slanesh but i wanted him to survive a little bit more so that way if he did survive and they did have to happen to take the morale test they're gonna flee and then he's still be able to be on the table so i wanted him to be super tanky uh in melee so that way at least i get him for one more round because the elixir stops uh wound caps him at three wounds so if he dies of shooting doesn't matter he has to be in, in combat for you to proc this and he gets a d3 additional attacks as well with the relic so he he is pretty cool i did play him wrong the first game which i'll go over how i played him but those two warlord traits and relics uh, on this guy makes him super awesome uh in the night lord's build dark apostle he's probably gonna get trashed uh he didn't really do much for the list i kind of brought him in there just so i could put illusionary supplication on the flamers didn't really have the flamers nearby uh the entire game so that's 95 points that i can play around with uh and take out but he did uh have illusionary supplication dark apostle uh is that's him. So Master Possession, let's skip over the Lord Discord, but Master Possession, he's uh, not packed because um, 
the demons. So we do have demons in, in the list. So the demons can use him as a warp locus to kind of get a six inch charge off on the enemy. So he's there so that way you can kind of run out of the, the ruin or the building and kind of be the teleport homer for your demons to come in and just uh, wreak havoc on the enemy team. So he does have the uh, mutated invigoration and also back to flesh so we can start making people uh, because anytime you're possessed die, being able to make more uh, throughout the game is, is huge. And the Discord, he just, he just, he got painted up by my, by my board Kivo and he looks fucking amazing. He's such a cool model, such cool uh, skills and stats and, and, and all that stuff. He has Dirty Fighter, so he's Fight Last, which in Night Lords is really, really cool. Uh, so he's a big base that can put Fight Last out on. But it did fuck up with terrain placement in the first game where he wasn't able to fit through a ruin. I know a lot of comments are going to be like, well, you're supposed to be able to fit all the models. Through. And yeah, I agree. But it got uh, worded uh, against me during the match because you can't kind of change terrain halfway through the, the, through the match, uh, which I agreed upon. But then even Jesse, who was my opponent, was like, yeah, that, that kind of fucking sucks. Like that that's that's bullshit and i was like yeah i, I know but I, I can't do anything about it so he literally had to run all the way around because of his big base but i'm gonna stop bitching about that let's go into uh he's got the dirty fighter um and he's also zinch zinch you ignore the first failed save uh and you can put a four up invuln save on him uh that's it so i would tweak him if i were to redo the list i'd probably make him um Give him like another relic or something. He, he might need flames of spite. He might need something else. But I needed to get Dirty Fighter in the list, and he was the only one that really I cared about putting Dirty Fighter on. Um, because Master, uh, maybe run two Master of Executions. I don't know. There's there's a lot of wiggle room in the HQ choices uh, that we have here. So that's what we used here. Cultist mob, de mob, definitely great uh, in Night Lords. I think I might actually change one of these into an Accursed Cultist because Accursed Cultists actually have minus one leadership uh, built in. So uh, having minus one minus one leadership in a Night Lords build is fucking awesome. So I'm probably going to take out a Cultist mob, add a Cursed Cultist, but definitely having a uh, Cultist mob in the list just for blocking out backfields as well as making them during the morale phase to try and steal objectives. So they're kind of like your 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 units to do actions with. So if you take one of them out for a curse cultists, they can't do actions. So try and remember that. Legionnaires, basic. Uh, I did bring the bail fire tome because I did bring a crown, which will be like, holy shit, this guy's running a crown. Yes, the crown is actually pretty good. I'm, th I'm thinking of running in my GT uh, tournament list with Black Legion, but I'll let you know and keep you posted on that. So definitely hit the subscribe button. Legionnaires, uh, they are literally just there to do the action every single game. So that's them. Uh, elites master execution. Now this is the favorite, probably my most favorite guy I ran in a very, very long time uh, next to my crow. Uh, Crow is super fun to run, but this guy being able to put relics and warlord traits on him as a 85 point model with Slanesh is deadly. So here's what he brings. Knight Haunter's Curse. Uh, this is a warlord trait for Night Lords where you can turn a dice roll into a six. I believe it's hit, wound, save, damage, and events. So any one of those you can turn into a six. Uh, and it's per turn, so you can do it on your turn and then the opponent's turn. So be, having this guy being almost wanting to roll sixes in the melee is huge because anytime he, hit, he has a six to hit, he does two mortal wounds in melee. And then you pair it with the Warp's Malice, which is a standard relic for Chaos Space Marines. It's a pistol. Anything after round two and three and four and five, it becomes pistol four. 18 inch range, strength five, AB2, two damage. Just a marine killer, all in all. Sixes do hit, do two mortal wounds. So this guy's just a mortal wound fiend. So 18 inch range, uh, you can advance and shoot it, but at least you'd move up six and shoot 18 inches. So basically a 24 inch range. Uh, and then it's got four shots. So basically he can turn one automatically into a six, which is two mortal wounds. And then being uh, explosions on sixes because you're in the tide uh, or the one time, whatever the fuck it's called, you're then putting that one extra six into the bucket to roll uh, to see if you can wound on top of that. So you roll three dice because one of them's an auto six. If you get any more sixes, that turns into mortal wounds and then additional hits because of the explosions. But he's Slanesh. So Slanesh has a one CP strat where he can turn another dice roll into a six. So you have two sixes to hit, which is four mortal wounds and two explosions. So let's say, for example, you roll 
one more six, which is which happened during the game. I rolled one six and a three, so that was three sixes, uh, which turned into six mortal wounds. And then I rolled to wound, which is strength five. So most of the time you're going to be wounding on a three against infantry. Um, you will roll threes. Let's say three. I'm sorry. <laughs> three sixes turn into hits for the explosion so you technically only want you're rolling three four dice to wound uh plus the six mortal wounds on top of that it's it's just it is the funnest thing to do and it shocks people so much when they actually get it done to them so that combo is fucking amazing so worth it now defensive uh he has slash so he fights first in melee um, and then he had, he's got a heroic six. I believe he fights first against um, characters as well, some, something with his thing. Uh, but heroic six has Slanesh, and in melee you can choose one of those sixes to become uh, an auto hit, which if you're on turn three it explodes, and it does two mortal wounds. So you've got like six stacks hitting on twos. It's, it's, it, is, guys, it is nuts. Or use it for a save. So let's say you're in combat or you're getting shot or whatever it may be. You're like, all right, well, that one uh, dice is automatically going to be a six. I'm going to spend one CP and turn that other dice into a six because of Slanesh. So there you go. I saved two of the last cannons that got just, just shot in my face or Meltas. Meltas you probably wouldn't need to save. But the other guys, you just kind of turn into a six and now he lives for one more turn. And on your turn, you then get to use another six uh, with your Warlord trade. So guys, try it. It's, it's super, super fun to do that combo. Uh, unit possessed, they have minus one leadership. They're just amazing units uh speed nine five attacks minus two two damage already minus one leadership so anything that is leadership eight or below already you're getting plus one to wound because of the night lords um uh traits two units if you can get three in there we might try and squeeze three uh in here but two units possess rubric marines they actually have the uh Black Room Damnation, so the minus one to wound. Uh, they have a bunch of cool stuff that they can do. They have warp time, so they can move up, shoot, or advance, shoot, psychic power to move again six inches and then shoot, so they have like a super far threat range. They can come in from reserves, give themselves a four up and save. They're minus one to wound. Anything with uh, one damage, they get plus one to their cover save. Um, and they're fucking flamers that have d6 plus two shots like they just melt everything uh so they're a really cool unit i got this uh, idea from one of the guys on discord but it's a very very cool unit um to be running uh yes yeah, so definitely check check them out now what you do is you pair them with the master of execution so master of executions in between them so that way he can heroic six if anybody gets near the flamers or he brings the night lord trait to that unit because it's a nine inch aura. So if they walk up and flame or something, the, the master of execution has to be nine inches away to make them run from morale or fail or whatever it may be. So uh, master of execution is kind of like bodyguarding with the uh, rubric marine. So it's definitely a good combo. Fast attack slot, uh, an extra 25 points. You can bring this guy, you don't have to. He's just a speed seven uh, unit that can run out and give minus one aura to somebody. Uh, you can do like a random action for a secondary. Um, like the all-spec scan or something and kind of just move block or charge a, a, a rhino. So I use mine as like um, a charging target. So let's say you're, you're charging another unit of flamers. You're like, all right, you know what? My chaos spawn going to charge in. Uh, do you want overwatch? <laughs> and they're like, fuck, uh, no. Okay, so uh, he gets in and then the unit that you really want to charge, which is the possess, charge in and just murder the flamer unit. So he is cool for 25 points. Uh, anytime you have extra points, he's he's good to kind of slip in, into, the, into the list. Raptors, again, you're kind of seeing the trend. Everything has minus one leadership. So it doesn't stack. It's all fear, uh, fearsome or fearless or whatever. But Raptors, uh, they're a cheap 12-inch uh, movement unit that can do banners come down turn one uh, because of the stratagem that Night Lords have. Turn one, you can bring a unit in from reserves which that works for the rubric marines or the raptors. So I most of the time put raptors in deep strike and I can reserve the rubrics and I decide if I go first, I can bring the rubrics in to be uh, offensively or bring the raptors down to put a banner on one of the far objective markers. Uh, and then you can also spend one CP to put it back up into reserves next turn to kind of do it again somewhere else. So it helps with engage, uh, helps with banners. So raptors being in the, in the list is I, th I think key uh, for night lords. Now this fortification, we have the the crown, uh, which does an aura, starts off 6, 9, 12, 
15, 18 maybe, uh, it gets bigger and bigger. Minus one leadership to non-chaos units within that aura. Uh, also, you get a CP at the end of your turn if you do an action. So a priest or a psyker unit can do an action, uh, which is why you bring the legionnaire unit and then they just basically stand next to the thing and just do an action every single turn. And Night Lords need their CP, especially with the uh, execution guy. So every single turn, you're getting an extra five CP throughout the game. I guess turn five, you don't really need it because it's at the end of the turn. So you get an extra four uh, CP. If you go first, turn five, you might need it. All right, so you get five CP uh, at the end of the game. Uh, extra that you didn't have before and you don't have to bring a CP to use this like other stuff This basically you just bring 100 points plus the 20 points for the psycho unit So 120 points to get an extra four four to five CP is I think worth it for them even uh, black legion So I kind of put them behind you can remove a terrain piece if you have set terrain You remove a terrain piece and you put this down within three inches or outside of three inches of all the other buildings uh, and then you kind of just it's there. Uh, everything within six inches of it, uh, within that aura, also gets four of invuln save. I forgot to mention that. That four of invuln save is key, especially if you don't go first and you have kind of some units that can't fit in the cover. You kind of have them just boom. I'm completely within six inches and have a four of invuln save turn one. We have a allegiance, uh, which is demons. We brought a transceiver. Some people uh, like to bring the. Uh, Demon Prince, the character Demon Prince from Slanesh, you can bring the mirror thing, which does uh, two casts for Slanesh for demons. It's also has a two up mortal wound save. I tested that the first time I ran it. It's just really expensive. I just wanted to get as many troops uh, and units in this list as possible. So we have the transfer at 70 points. Also brings the Phantasmagoria, uh, which she speed 10, like she's super quick and she can cast 18 inches away, target a unit on a seven plus, uh, you roll 66 and any five plus they take a mortal wound. Every mortal wound, every mortal wound that they take uh, reduces their leadership by one. So it's additive. So you target a unit that you wanna run away uh, let's say you do three mortal wounds that that leadership nine unit is now leadership six before you even get near them uh, You then run a night lord uh, unit with minus one leadership up there their leadership three now before you even attack uh, And let's say you kill one guy now their leadership two If you have a demon unit near them their leadership one so one guy bring them down to a leadership one <laughs> with that little 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 tactic uh, so that, that's that. Then you bring a unit of 10 demonettes, they're obsec. They have pretty cool strats where they can consolidate and pile in six inches, so they're super quick. Uh, they actually hit pretty hard. They're strength four, four attacks each, uh, AP two, <laughs> sure, one damage. Uh, and then we got the fiends. The fiends are super fast. They're 14 inches, they're beast, uh, so they can actually move through um, walls. Uh, so we got two units of three. I like the two units of three because you can kind of separate them and charge different stuff. Plus they have a one CP strat that can do minus two uh, to cast for psychic powers during their uh, enemy psychic phase. So let's say you charge in, move 14, charge in, consolidate or pile in, consolidate. You kind of have it now a huge gap and then 12 inches bubble uh, minus two to cast. So if they go into the, into the psychic phase and, and they're within 12 inches of these fiends, boom, you spend them one CP, now they're minus two to cast. Minus two to cast is such a kick in the nuts for psychic armies. Uh, so then we got two units of fiends. And that's 1999 points. <sighs> okay, so uh, that is the... That is the um, now the combo with this is they also give minus one leadership and minus one combat attrition tests. Night Lords give minus two leadership and minus one combat attrition tests. So anything that is not a space marine is already getting minus two to their combat uh, attrition tests. And I forgot the Demon Prince, it counts as being half strength. So here, here's what happens. Let's say you charge into, I don't know, a 20 man blob unit, uh, 30 man, whatever, a bunch of dudes. You kill like two, three guys. Their leadership, I don't know, eight. They go down to seven, six, five because of you kill three people. Night Lords bring it down to leadership four. Um, demon Prince is minus one, leadership three. Uh, the other demon is minus one, so that's leadership two. So you're leadership two only by killing three guys, okay? But you're also minus one combat attrition test um, because of the Demon Prince, the Warlord trait. You're minus one combat attrition test because of Night Lords. You're minus one combat attrition test because of Demons. Uh, and you count as being at half strength. So even though you kill three guys, you're running on ones and twos. Three is because of Night Lords. Three, four is because of Demons. 
So you're running on ones, twos, threes, and fours. <laughs> so any fives or sixes, uh, yeah, <laughs> you'll live. Um, but it is it is such a good combo uh, to do all that. And most of the time they're all running together because you have 14 inch fiends that just get in combat. Uh, and then you have the deep striking demonettes coming in from your master possession to get in combat. So you're almost always gonna have a demon near you. If you need your uh, demon HQ to get up, she's speed 10 uh, and she hits pretty hard in combat. So she can get in, into the fray and kind of do some damage as well. Now this does have a lot of characters. So you give up assassinate pretty easily. Uh, if you you know do that, I, I am gonna take away the dark apostle and see what I can add in instead of that. But let's get into the game. All right, so this is this is our boy Jesse. He is a local and very very good player. He's one of the top uh, players in the world right now. He's running guard uh, to the best uh, his possibly can. He has every every RTT and GT that I, I see him at. So we always face face each other. We happen to get uh, round one pairing. So might as well go against the best if you're going to go uh, into an RTT round one. So I got to go against Jesse turn one or game one with my Night Lords, which is just a fun list. Uh, so I was like, all right, if I can beat him with Night Lords, I can definitely beat him with other Chaos Space Marines. But last time uh, we played, I think it was at a, a GT. Yes, I played Black Legion, that, that, that's why I, I beat him at the GT. But his list uh, kind of stayed pretty much the same. He's got a unit of Rough Riders, uh, two units of Mortars, the obviously Horse Guy, uh, two units of Kazakins, one with the Relic with the Teleporter, two units of Troops, one Commander Squad with the Ogren, who's fucking insane to kill, unit of Rattlings, and it's funny because I know all these units because I play them so many fucking times, uh, three units of Plasma things, uh, three or four things of Plasma, and two Battle Cannons, one has the Relic on it. So my list versus that list, the terrain setup is the AU, <laughs> that's my list. Uh, this is the, the speed painting. Uh, they look actually really cool. I have to do the bases and stuff still. Uh, oh, and we're doing Night Lord. So we got the bat for the spawn. So it looks really, really cool. And this is the, the Disco Lord. Just finished them that day. Uh, fucking beautiful. This is the uh, uh, Massive Execution. I used the, the Warhammer or the, the 30K edition. And then we got the Possessed. So... And then a little chunky little deep prints. This is the board setup. We have the AU terrain. So it basically has the two line of sight blocking ruins, the two line of sight blocking ruins. We actually just made these recently. So we just updated the terrain uh, on all the tables. Two little pieces of ruin. And this is what I was talking about. See that thing? That's going to come up uh, uh, in the game later. So that should not be that close to the ruin. Uh, that's where we fucked up, uh, or I fucked up. But let's go over uh, deployment. So. He deployed pretty defensively in the back here because he knew that I can run up. I can't deep strike turn one with the demons, but he put everybody back because he, he didn't want to get charged, I guess, by the, 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 fuck, the spawn, not spawn, the fiends. Wow, okay. Fiends from behind the wall. Uh, then all these guys in the back here, so he's castled up, uh, and these guys just don't die. So my deployment, I got fiends, fiends, uh, possessed, this guy out because of he's character protected by all the other guys characters characters demon prince possessed and these guys are blocking out the teleporting dudes which are just super annoying and this is the crown <laughs> so the crown will be painted by next uh tournament but he's behind here uh line of say blocking terrain he's outside of three inches from that feature and everything within six inches which is all these guys are all four up in mold save which is pretty cool uh especially turn one against a guard so this is the secondaries. We took uh, Reap the Fear, which was super cool. Uh, banners and behind enemy lines. And then he took Command, Ass, and Boots on the ground. Now, uh, I didn't have turn one, he had turn one. So he moved all of his tank. These, these two tanks at the bottom behind my head uh, were able to get line of sight on the possessed units. So I believe he killed uh, all but two possessed maybe all but one possessed. So there's one possessed guy left over there that I can you know, keep making dudes. Uh, he then moved up and did some banners. I know he did boots on the ground, command boots on the ground and assassinate. So he walks up and does the, uh, gets on the objectives. The command squad's out front. He did 12 inch bubble. So that way you can't deep strike or uh, come in from reserves from 12 inches, which is really good, especially with the demons. And uh, I put the rubrics in reserves. Uh, we also put the Raptors in reserve as well. So this was my idea. I moved my, both my fiends out because if I can get uh, basically everything in combat turn one, like especially on this side, I at least have the bottom 
uh, of the map. This guy moved up to kind of shoot the uh, some of the rattlings and also anybody else that he can get line of sight on. I believe he can kill. Shit, I think he put one uh, of the bomb things, the mortars on the outside of the wall. I don't know why. So that thing kind of moved up to the uh, building and then shot the mortars and just took the mortars off the table. Uh, and then everything else kind of stayed back, waited for round two. We moved up, put a banners down on that objective, moved up, put a banners down on that objective. We gave illusionary supplication to, I believe my, uh, this guy. Then these guys, I spent one CP to bring him from reserves. We put plus one strength and toughness on, or plus one toughness on them, and then we gave them skeins of fate for the four-up invuln save. We put them in the in the forest, so they get plus one to the cover save at this event. They get plus one to the cover save and the dense cover. And then he had the 12-inch bubble to, on everybody besides the command unit. The command unit was the furthest out front. So uh, we can't come in within 12 inches, but we can still come in within 12 inches of this fucker uh, to get our flamers in range. So we got all but the commander in range of this command unit. Now, here's what I didn't know. He had transhipment on, doesn't matter, I have flamers, but their toughness five. Our flamers only strength four. So we need fives to wound with no reroll. So I didn't wound as much as I, as I wanted to. I think I had like 40 or 50 shots, uh, but I only wounded them like maybe 12 to 13 times. I forget, I forget what had happened, but I killed two or three guys and I killed the ogre, which you can bring the ogre back every single turn. So I didn't really get my worth out of them. I should have figured out a way if I could do two CP and um, plus one to wound on them, which would have wounded on fours instead of fives, which would have, would, have, would have wounded so much more. I don't know if there's a way to reroll wounds with them besides having like Vendetta from Black Legion. Let me know if, if there's a way to make these guys hit harder for toughness five units. So he lived. Uh, I thought I was just going to kill that whole squad, which would have been fucking awesome. These guys did the action in the back here for the crown, so that way I can get the one CP. And that was my turn. Pretty simple. Oh, and these guys charged in. So we he moved the rattlings up to try and block, so I was able to kind of charge around, kind of chill out in the forest. And then these guys charged up uh, and then consolidate, piled in into the mortars. So on the other side of the wall, we charged or moved up, piled into the mortars, so that, that way the mortars were in combat with me. All right, so his, this is what happened. So we moved into the to the ruin and we tied this mortar up right here. So that way they're in combat and these guys are kind of chilling right here. And the master of executions is chilling, waiting to be over there. His turn then. Uh, yeah, so he basically killed all the fiends but one on the other side of the wall here. Uh, and then the Kazakins, they're just shooting everything off, off the table. The battle tank moved up, and I believe he charged the uh, fiends because they're not really good in combat. They have a five up uh, save in combat. So the tank is in combat with them, so they can't really do anything. They can't fall back and charge. Uh, everything else kind of moved up over here. The ogre got brought back, of course. Uh, and then all I have left is after all that shooting, he shot basically everything into this rubric marine uh unit and they lived down to two he also charged me with these guys and i think i overwatched and killed three of them uh, as i think i had like three or four extra flamers left before he charged me so i was able to, to do some wounds before the the rough riders came in and then he had two left two rough riders left which then i uh moved up uh, killed one and then forced him to do a morale test. But w again, the combo here is he's within nine inches of my uh, execution guy. So he's minus two leadership and uh, minus one combat attrition test. So obviously he failed the leadership and then ran on his last bike. So that freed up my my two uh, remaining rubrics. And then I have my master execution to move out and do whatever the fuck he wants. I did fail to bring one of these guys back, which kind of sucked. So he got failed. He failed. So he's kind of like just a lone survivor. I wish I would have made one last turn so that way I would have three left, uh, a possessed. Uh, and then down here, illusionary. I forgot that he had illusionary. Oh, this is this is what I'm showing you. So this is where I couldn't move past. Uh, fuck. <laughs> so he had to go all the way around this way to get around this like stupid building thing. So when you're setting up terrain, make sure that you're equal distance between your bases so that way like if you have knights or something like that they can actually move through fucking terrain so this is where i, I got uh, judged hard on and, and jesse was like yeah that that kind of sucks i'm like yeah i mean can't do anything about it we, we set it up uh so 
Possessed moved out from the bottom. This is where we committed, committed hard. So possessed moved out from the bottom here. Uh, the one possessed moved up here and I made another possessed. I believe they put up a banner. Uh, these guys came down and did the action uh, on the center objective, the Raptors. So we put one Raptor there, one Raptor there, and the rest of Raptors over there. Um, we put Illusionary on the HQ dude here. These guys got uh, plus one strength, I believe. Uh, and then the Demon Prince moved up as well. This is where I ran up my Master Possession and the Demonette. Demonette didn't have to move forward, I believe. I think she could have like stayed back. But the master possession moved up. We deep struck all the demons within six inches and they were able to get that six inch charge. So they charged, uh, I believe they charged the tank. Yeah, demon prince charged the tank, possessed charged the tank, he charged the tank, and then demon has charged the tank. So everybody charged the tank. Uh, demon prince killed the tank, so everybody else was able to move up, pile in. And since this guy charged as well, he should have been able to move up and pile in. So he should have moved up, piled in on the other side of the building, like around the corner of the building. Um, I know you can't go through, but around the building. And then kind of just wait there uh, on the other side of the building. So I couldn't move, so he was kind of just stuck right there in that little little caddy corner. And then everything else moved up. So I was, I was able to keep these two within three inches of the demonettes. But this is where I fucked up. He had full rerolls to wound on this unit. I piled in my demons, demonettes, to tag the mortars and tag this unit. Demonettes have a five up save in combat. So they didn't kill anything in combat during my turn, but they all died in combat during my turn because he has full rerolls to hit and wound with this squad. Uh, I don't know if it's a, if it's just shoot, I'm, I'm sure it's just in general, but he killed basically three, six, maybe seven of my demonettes uh which then i failed morale and then the other one ran so i left my two characters open and then my demon prince open uh and this guy was still character protected by these guys but still one two three characters wide in the fucking open so i should have piled in uh and just stayed outside of this maybe just tag the mortars if i could uh but that would have been that would have been hard <clears throat> but i shouldn't have piled into these guys i should have just kept them you know, bunched up in front of the Demon Prince, bunched up in front of these guys, so that way he couldn't kill my characters uh, e that easily. Because all he had on this side of the table was a tank over here, which couldn't really see anything. Uh, these guys had to fall back and shoot from the order, but they would have had to shoot the demons, which they have a four up save compared to a five up save, and my Demon Prince probably would have survived a little bit longer. So that was that was my big, biggest mistake of the game the master of execution another big mistake he char he moved up shot charged in uh and got all three of these units in combat and then these guys moved up shot and then charged in the flamers took out most of these guys and then they ran some around so i kept getting points every time they run uh and then they charged to kind of tie up some tanks i fucked up because he shot his heavy bolter into my uh dude in combat and during his turn, I had a six that I could have used for a save. And then I had another CP that I could have used as another save because of Slanesh. So I fucked that up because I was rolling, like slow rolling it. So instead of slow rolling it, I should have just spent one CP and then turned it into a six to save. But instead I fucked it up and I slow rolled it, rolled like a two, uh, spent a CP to reroll it and then failed the save. So. Should have just spent the CP, CP to make it a six, and then he would have been alive on his turn uh, with Slanesh fighting first to be able to kill something over here, probably the command squad with his mortal wounds. So I fucked up there, very bad. And the biggest fuck up was right here, really bad. <laughs> so at that point, after uh, that turn, this is this is how it ended. Uh, he moved everybody else up. I had one demon left. <laughs> Uh, the Kazakins moved up and shot basically I think everything into the, into the demon or these guys these guys came in from reserves for boots on the ground they shot my master possession uh, these tanks killed the demon prince and these characters it was it was brutal so this is where I fucked up he had illusionary supplication which I love playing the cards because when you put them on the ground or on the table you see what they have and the opponent should be able to see Okay, I have illusionary supplication on, on what what does that mean? Oh, I've hit him on fours, great, I hit you on fours, no rerolls. Both of us forgot that that was even on the table, so I forgot that he had illusionary supplication. Jesse didn't see the card that he had illusionary supplication, so I was getting all these rerolls from the fucking guard and just shooting me, uh, and he took me down to two wounds. 
and he killed all but one possessed with one wound. So it was a very, very bad turn for Night Lords because of that consolidation move and me forgetting that I had Illusionary Supplication on. So at this point, he killed my Master of Execution because I fucked that up. Uh, I took my uh, down dude down to one wound. He's got one wound. My Demon Prince, Master Possession, and uh, Demon Net died. So that was bad that was that was i was like all right this is this is probably over at this point now what i did next was i moved everybody up one more one more shot and uh he overwatched me with the full rerolls to hit and wound with these guys and just killed my my uh disco lord i was like all right that, that, that's game bro like i can't really come back from that uh if he would have st still had his you know six to eight wounds which he should have had um I would have been able to, I flamed this unit down here, so that way I can just try and kill some of them, make them flee, get some more points. Uh, and then I was gonna charge these guys, pick these guys up and then consolidate into the tank uh, and just have my Disco Lord wreak havoc. But again, illusionary supplication, he didn't see it. I forgot I had it, fucked it up. That's what that should have ended. Uh, but I probably should have had still two or three more characters on the bottom. Master of Execution still, sh still should have been up top. And that was it. So at this point, we called the game. Uh, I forgot that I moved my one uh, possessed on the other side of this wall, the one guy that lived. He moved up, and I forgot to charge these dudes over here, which would have been you know, some more death. But that's all right. He he uh, he countered my one you know play uh, at the end. So whatever. He won. He won the tournament. So congrats to Jess. Again, he's, he's one of the best players in the area. Uh, so he kicked my ass because I, I made small mistakes and he didn't. So that was good. So what I learned again, um, super fast list, really good into guard, uh, especially making them run and, and flee and stuff like that. If you have the terrain that you can kind of hop out and get the charges off without getting overwatched too bad, or you can kind of like consolidate and pile it into, into shit that doesn't have full reels to hit and wound, you'll be good. And the crown didn't even get shot all game, so the crown get it, kept getting me CP. So he did, he did good. All right, so next game was against Grey Knights. Uh, so we actually was able to play another fellow Grey Knight player. Uh, and it's funny, I don't like telling people in the tournament that I got ranked number one in Grey Knights uh, in 2023 in the world. So if they know me, cool. Hey man, nice to meet you. Uh, give them a dice for you know the dirtbag dice for playing me. But at the end, I'll be like, hey, uh, I actually you know got ranked number one last year with Grey Knights, and they're like, oh no way. Uh, I can't. That that's why you knew everything. I was like, yeah, you know. So throughout the game, I try and tell, uh, coach them and like tell them what what to do, what I would suggest, stuff like that. So this guy was like a newer Grey Knight player, but. His, his uh, uh, secondaries he was taking was a little bit different than what I was taking. So I was like telling him like, I know, just change it, take this, you know, try that out, stuff like that. So uh, he ran a really fun list. He didn't run any Dread Knights. He wanted to run all infantry. So I was like, fuck yeah. Uh, so again, with Grey Knights, I kind of, I'm telling him the spells that he's going to cast before he, he casts it, which he was like, how, how do you know that? <laughs> so it, it, was, it was just a fun time playing another Grey Knight player. Uh, so as we were playing... I really wanted to test the Night Lords out into Grey Knights because playing Grey Knights, we're all leadership eight. So anytime you go against leadership eight, Night Lords uh, basically are already bringing you down to leadership five because minus two for Night Lords and minus one for either demons or uh, possessed or demon, uh, the demon prince. So anything that we go against you, we're already plus one to wound, which is awesome. All of guard, I was plus one to wound uh, as well, which was pretty cool. But this entire army, uh, besides, I believe the Paladins, I was plus one to wound with. So, yeah, it was, it hurt. Uh, the crown, you can't really see, but it's behind my head. Uh, kind of catty cornered in the corner here, so that way it could stop some line of sight. But also, I got my little Legionnaire units right there to do the action. We got the Disco uh, Lord on the corner. We have all the characters in the center. We have the little uh, possessed, uh, I mean, um, bat guy. Fiends up here, uh, Flamers, Execution, Possessed, Possessed, Demons, and then Cultists, and then Demons behind the thing. So he got turn one. Uh, he was able to kind of move up, gate a unit of Paladins. Uh, he had three units of Paladins, uh, two units of Terminators, a bunch of Interceptors, some Strikes. Uh, he had Purifiers. He had a Razorback. He had the Apothecary, uh, Chaplain the brother captain 
I think, and then a uh, library. So all the basic gradient stuff. And I had a unit of cultists down here, I believe for bombs. Yeah, tear down the icon so we're playing the bomb mission. I took uh, Reap because I wanted to test that out against a Space Marine, Banners, and Engage. Uh, then he took Warp Ritual, which I, I obviously probably not the best thing. I would probably would have taken a Purify Ritual, Assassinate, and Banners. Uh, but I wanted the Cultist to be down here to kind of walk over and just put a bomb down, just keep putting bombs down if, if he doesn't get shot. All right, so I'm going to kind of run through this, this pretty quickly. I just want to show you the key moments that really push both sides. He moved everything up. At this point, I was like, all right, this is this is gonna be a test game. Uh, so at this point, I just moved everything out. I didn't wanna kill everything too fast, because again, anytime you go to an RTT, you're just testing stuff out. You don't wanna make people's days miserable. That's just, it's just not fun. I already lost the first game, so this isn't really anything like, this is more just like test, practice, fun game, right? So I moved everything out. Uh, the flamers, I think I put all the flamers into like three dudes <laughs> instead of like splitting it across like the board. Uh, the demons moved out, the possessed moved out, Disco Lord moved out. He was able to charge his paladins uh, into my um, demon nets or fiends on this side of the table. Uh, so he killed all the fiends and then I just countered with the possessed and my demon prince to finish off the paladins. Uh, the other paladins were up here in the forest the Terminators, the Librarian, and Interceptors, and a whole bunch of dudes in the back corner. Razorback had the uh, Incinerator, or the Purifiers in there. And yeah, so after this turn, uh, this was this was the end. So we were able to kill this unit, uh, tie him up on the other side of this uh, thing, and again, the, the one CP strat to extend 12 inches of denial, minus two to cast, especially for an all Psyker army, is fucking deadly, especially with the fiends. So these guys scooted up. I had my master of execution kind of in the center, like I told you, uh, to give the night lords aura. We had the possessed up here. They finished off the little interceptors up here. We have one uh, terminator left and a librarian. All the paladins up there are still good. And then he has all these terminators over here. So after this, he just tried to kill as many as he possibly could. He deep struck. Uh, Interceptors, which I was coaching, you should probably just use a Rhino and combat squad him and launch him out of the Rhino. Uh, because since he didn't have that, I didn't really have to fear that strategy. So I could have my characters kind of be, you know, wide in the open, like this guy over here, the Dean Prince on the other side of the wall, uh, this character against the wall. So I could have my characters pretty out in the open because I wasn't fearful of his 15 inch threat range for the interceptors, like most of the Grey Knights uh, are going to be doing. So we finally put a bomb down in the bottom corner here with the uh, possessed or the cultists. He had plenty of guys to kind of walk out and just blow up these cultists. But again, newer player, newer granites player. Um, purifiers walked up, flamed a bunch of dudes. And then at the end of this, everything started coming out to play. So everything from behind this wall moved out. Um, he had his two characters, one character here, one character there. Uh, and one character in the back here, uh, ready to move up. I deep struck these guys for uh, engage, the Raptors in the back corner here. And then all these guys started moving up. Uh, my cultist moved up to, to block uh, after putting down another bomb. Uh, the master of execution be able to shoot the pistol and just do all, like I shot the pistol once and he was like, Oh my God, that's insane. So I just felt bad. So I stopped shooting it. <laughs> I just saved my CP and just kind of like ran at him instead. Uh, so like I said, anytime you're at this point, I don't like crushing people. There's really no point in the hobby to do that. Um, unless you're like at a GT and you really need to fucking get points. But this is an RTT, friendly RTT. So there's really no point to crush opponents like this. So I stopped shooting my my relic pistol and all this stuff. Uh, I still have all the flamers. Like it's just, it just wasn't a good game for the Grey Knight. Uh, even though he learned the most he's ever uh, seen or played before because I kept helping at him throughout the entire game. So he just learned so many different rules, so many key rules. Uh, all the fun stuff. So we finished the game off. We had Reap and Sow for 15, which was cool. Banners for 15. Engage for 12. 45 for, for primary. So we had 87 for primary. And then he had uh, 20 for primary. Zero for Warp Ritual because I denied it. And then I believe he, he ran away so he wasn't able to cast it anymore. Um, and then three for Assassinate and six for Banners. 
So yeah, like I said, it was a really tough game uh, just because I know how to play <laughs> Great Knights and I know how to play against Great Knights. So I was kind of looking out for what to do. And once I saw that he was kind of like a newer player, I was like, all right, let's, let's ease back a little bit and kind of teach him a little bit more. So last game uh, real quick was against uh, Sisters. This is our, our boy Kevin. I played Kevin for fucking years. I played him like 10 years ago when I was into 40K originally. And then he uh, slowly came back actually into the scene uh, and is just a really chill guy <laughs> like he's really cool to, to play against I, I don't have a lot of reps against him i think this is the first rep i have uh going against them since like manfest which is a a big like seven on seven apocalypse game but so i want to take this one a little bit more seriously because he is a competitive player and he knows a lot about the game so he's running sisters super cool color scheme he's got two rhinos with uh retributors uh he's got these uh two guys which were stand-ins for um mortifiers i think they have the heavy bolters on them so two single mortifiers uh 30 zephyrum uh zephyrum uh and then celestine he had ball obviously he had a uh a dogmata he had a canoness um I'm trying to remember if he had anything else ball canoness some uh melted chicks so I think he had a unit of melted chicks. So three units of melted chicks, two retributor chicks, dogmata, and then Zara from chicks. Yep. So pretty standard uh, uh, sisters build, like all the all the awesome characters. This is the third game I took. Uh, Reap and fear and so and night lord shit. Banners uh, behind enemy lines. He took rod, uh, leap, and shrine. So he basically just took all three of his. Um, and he had, I think he had turn one. Shit, who had turn one? <laughs> uh, he had turn one, so he basically moved everything up. And I moved everything up to charge him, yes. So I put all my guys down here on the line because he didn't have a lot of shooting and I was out of range of his get out of the rhino and then shoot me with meltas and if you wanted to, to get the guys out of the rhino and kill a unit with meltas i would have came back and killed them from getting out of the rhino so it was kind of a trade like are you going to do it and he didn't do it so he moved all his rhinos up guys are still inside moved the rhino up guys are still inside i was able to kind of move everybody out uh, as far as possible to get the charge off on the rhino i wanted to surround the rhino and have them blow up the rhino and then kill the guys inside or he had an emergency disembark so I was able to take this rhino down to like, I don't know, three or four wounds and it lived for like the rest of the game. Uh, but I tug up the rhino and then down here we were able to kill the rhino with these three units. He then uh, emergency disembarked, got the chicks out this far and then the retributor out this far. If he kills one dude from each unit, I have the, my demon prince right next to him. So he would be at minus three leadership and have to roll two dice and drop the lowest for morale checks. So instead of him killing one from the retributor and one from the uh, melted chicks, he just killed all the melted chicks, or I think two or three melted chicks, uh, and then they ran and killed uh, two more. So um, he killed the melted chicks from the morale, but the retributors were completely fine. Uh, and that was smart because I told him like, hey, you have to, like th this is kind of the whole point of the Night Lords is to make you run. So that's really what happened is he rolled like one or two sixes from the explosion uh, and then he failed the morale and then he ran away. So that was, that was really, really cool. Uh, and then I put Illusionary on the Cultist, which I found out that you can actually put Illusionary in the Cultist. So again, I'm gonna take the Illusionary guy out, but Cultist moved up, put a banner, put a banner in the back here. And those guys are kind of chilling up there. So for behind enemy lines, I didn't get behind enemy lines because I forgot I had behind enemy lines. I thought I had engaged. That's why I was like spreading out this way. So that was that was my bad. Uh, Crown is doing its job in the back here. I have the uh, character, 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 character. So all my characters are kind of chilling out in the bottom, just waiting for shit to happen. His guys are still kind of behind the wall. Uh, the possessed ran up and. These guys got out of the rhino up top here. They did rod in the back corner. Uh, the retributors uh, got out and charged the demons, finished off the demons. These guys tried to block the uh, center objective so that we couldn't get on it as best as I possibly could. And these guys, all right, so that's that's what happened. So the one Zaraphim unit 
got buffed up and charged out and finished off basically everything over here. <laughs> the Retributors charged the Demon Prince. I did uh, the Illusionary Supplications. So I could only be um, three wounded, uh, take three wounds. I put Illusionary on the Disco Lord just for a little bit safety. Uh, he's got the fight last. And uh, all this shit charged my possessed, kill the possessed, charge demons, kill the demons. Um, these possessed then ran out of the wall and finished off the unit uh, up here, which was the Zeraphim. And the demons got deep struck over here. So the massive possession ran up uh, again within six inches. They're able to deep strike because of the, uh, the, the thingy, the thing that he has. So he's got that thing and they're able to deep strike within six inches outside six inches of the enemy unit. So I basically can charge either the melted guys, the rhino or the Xerophim, uh, which I, I think I failed actually. And these guys came in, uh, it's turn two, so I can't come in as deployment zone, but I could still come in from this table edge. So they all came in and they were within range of the Xerophim here, the uh, character canonist here, and also a unit of um, melted dudes and Xerophim on the other side here. So they were within 12 inch range of basically three different units. I deep checked my Raptors all the way in this back corner for behind me lines because I remember that I actually had that, that secondary. <laughs> so they got me three points for being back there. Uh, and then mass execution came out to shoot some, some chicks, did some mortal wounds. Uh, we did a psychic power, which I think she failed. And let's get into how brutal this turn was. Okay, so the Flamers killed the Canonists. I didn't want to spend the CP to Rezzer because then she would have just been charged. I killed all the Melted Chicks and I killed all but four of these Xerophim <laughs> on the other side of the wall here. So this was the biggest play that he was not expecting. Uh, turn two that these guys coming in from reserves uh, and just neutering basically three and a half squads on the side of the table. Uh, auto hitting, wounding on threes, AP two, you have a five up save, four pink, like it, it one wound models, it just, they just evaporate. So they all died. Um, we had a unit of cultists in reserves, which I forgot about. So they walked on on this table edge. So that way next turn they can walk up and put a banner. Uh, what else? We have the demonettes. They again, failed their charge. Oh, this, <laughs> so I rolled, a. Uh, I think this was the dice rolls of all of the, uh, flamers that came in and just fuck it. Oh, this was Vol. All right, so this is how many wounds we had on Vol. Okay, so we rolled all this dice. We had two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 wounds on Vol needing fives. So Vol was gonna charge the uh, <laughs> Flamers um, and we wounded her 16 times. Uh, she then failed and died. <laughs> so uh, Vol, that was a good test. Vol charged, failed, made the charge, but took all the Flamers to the face and just died. Uh, Celestine finally came out. She charged the Demon Prince to stay three inches away from my fight last dude. Um, so she was able to take the Demon Prince off the table. Again, these guys failed their charge, so they deserve to die. Zeraphim came down from Deep Strike and uh, charged my Master Possession and Demons, and they actually didn't kill as much as I thought they would kill. Uh, I think three or four killed, uh, attacked my Master Possession. He made a saves, and then a couple killed the Demonettes, and not all of them died. And then this like thing charged in, they charge in. So again, it, at this point, it kind of like, once these flamers came in and just killed all those points off the table, it wasn't really, it was all an uphill battle. So the uh, flamers moved up to kind of flamer Celestine. So that way hopefully I can try and kill her uh, to knock her down. Um, <laughs> the spawn moved up and, and charged this thing, didn't do anything. Uh, what else? The flamers are still like, there's all the flamers left. They didn't, they didn't really die. So Celestine dies. We have one cultist left on the center. <laughs> we have the master execution running all the way up here for the behind, behind enemy lines. And the rhino lived like, what the fuck, man? The rhino literally lived with one wound until the end of the game. And this, this is the wrap up. So we have uh, Reap the Fear uh, for 11 because I killed too many with shooting <laughs> rather than combat. So the Flamers killed a shit ton uh, and I was able to get five, 10, 11 for the Reap, Reap the Fear. 
Banners, we got 15. Behind enemy lines, we got 14. So we had 3-3, three, 4-4. Three, four, four. And then we had 45 for primary. So we finished off with 85. And then for his primary, we had about 20. Rod, we had uh, 4 because we were only able to get it in two quarters. We had 12 for Leap. Uh, and then we had Shrine for 6. So his Shrine was the bottom right one uh, on here. So I... That's why probably why I put all my characters on that side of the table so they can kind of just take over that side. Uh, and then he wasn't able to come back. And the flamers came in that side as well. So the flamers came in on that side of the table to kind of clear off the shrine and keep the shrine clear for the rest of the game. But uh, 42-85 from the final matchup. And this was another game against my cousin testing out, uh, I think, Black Legion versus uh, Sisters of Battle. So super, super fun. Uh, and these, these are the new objectives that just came in. So 3D6 Wargaming, if you guys are interested, it's in the link uh, below. But they have a ton of these. They Actually, all of these characters. Um, can't really see. But all of these characters they have. Uh, I have stickers of each character that we're making. We actually are making six new characters. Let me actually pull them up for you. So these characters just got finished uh, today, actually. We have the Dark, Eldra Dark Eldar dude that everybody runs. Uh, we have Sanguinor. We have um, Bellacor, we have Gilliman, we have Yorick, and we have the Lion. So those are the six new uh, characters that we are adding to the 3D6 Wargaming and also the stickers. I just ordered the stickers today, so if you guys are interested in the stickers, we got the stickers up on uh, Discord, and the dice come, you know, dollar a piece. They're the dirtbag dice if you guys want to support the channel. We ship them out globally, actually, uh, all over the world. Uh, you just got to pay for shipping, obviously, if you're overseas. But it's it's really cool. The mats are awesome. Uh, he actually sent me out a bunch of uh, samples so I can bring them to uh, events and kind of sell them at the events. And uh, uh, ACO, we're definitely bringing a ton to ACO. The last event, we sold like 60 dice with... Uh, I think it was like 15 stickers like it was really cool and then the last gt we sold a bunch of stickers as well so i bring them with me so if you guys are interested definitely hit me up in discord but they're they're really cool they're actually really really thick cool stickers so that was uh that was our night lords guys night lords again is super fun my entire army is painted for the night lords theme because I, I i love the the books i'm on the second book now uh just the lore with conrad curse is just so cool and uh and I just love like the look of it, like the 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 midnight blue, the clad iron. The, it's, it's so cool. So uh, hopefully you guys liked it and enjoyed the video. I do a lot of these uh, tactical strategy picture videos for tournaments and GTs. I have a ton of them on the channel. If you guys want to go check those out, definitely let me know. Put in the comment what you liked, what you didn't like, what we can improve on the channel uh, in the description or comments below. Sorry. Hit the like button. That definitely helps out. And also the subscribe. We're trying to get up to 3,000 subscribers so we can do another junk stream for you guys and answer a ton of questions. There's a lot of uh, tournaments and GTs coming up in the next uh, two months, which again, if you see me, uh, definitely come up and say hi. Say you're, say you're a dirtbag. Uh, and then ACO, if you guys are going to go to that, definitely hit me up uh, in the comments so that way I can kind of look out for you. And, and again, if you see me, I got the the, the dice that I give out uh, to all my people that I play who joins the Dirtbag Nation. It is the uh, the Dirtbag, oh, there you go, the Dirtbags dice. So this is the uh, Marble uh, brand. These are limited editions, so nobody else can buy these. You have to get them face to face uh, by either playing me or seeing me at a uh, convention. Uh, just come up to me and say you're a dirtbag, and then I'll get you one of the dice. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you all my all my patreons. This wouldn't be you know possible if it wasn't for you. If you guys do want to go support me, definitely head over to the Patreon. It's going to be in the link in one of these like little things in the fucking corners. But good luck, guys. I'll see you in another video soon.